Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can find the area of an area model. And we're going to talk about how we can use um, the area and the side length to find an unknown side, unknown side length. So our learning goal for today says, I can find the area of a rectangle by multiplying the side lengths. So the materials that you'll need for today are a ruler, your whiteboard, dry erase board, and your lesson eight template, which looks like this. So it's just a grid. So that's also located in your math book. So make sure you grab those materials and then click play when you're ready to begin the lesson. All right, friends. So how many rows are in this incomplete array? Remember the rows are what's going side to side across. So how many rows are in our incomplete array? Okay, there's four rows. How many square units are there in each row? Okay, there's seven square units in each one. Do we need to complete the array to find the area of the rectangle? Why or why not? So yes or no. What do you guys think? Do we have to fill in and make a grid for all of those, that blank space to be able to find the area of this rectangle. Nope, we sure don't have to do that. Can you multiply any two side lengths to find the area? No, you have to multiply the two that are next to each other. Okay, so you're gonna multiply the side that shows the number of rows and the side length that shows the number of squares in each row. So it's the side and the top, basically, or it could be the bottom. Okay, but the two sides that are next to each other, basically. All right, so we're gonna label the side lengths and write a multiplication equation to find the area of this rectangle. So you're labeling each side, and then you're going to find the um, area using a multiplication sentence or equation. So go ahead and pause the video, do that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here's my sides, four by seven. So I would do four times seven equals, and then friends, what's four times seven? That's 28, awesome. So the area of this is 28. Now we don't know, we would say square units because they didn't tell us what the actual unit of measure was. All right, so what do you notice about this rectangle? Hmm. Yeah, we know both the side lengths, but we don't know the area and there's no grid in this one. So it's an area model because there's no grid on the inside that tells us that this is an area model. So an area model is just a rectangle without a grid. So do we still have enough information to find the area of this rectangle even without those grid lines? Yeah, we sure do, absolutely. So write the multiplication equation to find the area of this rectangle. So go ahead and pause the video. Write your multiplication equation and solve to find the area, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. All right, so six times eight equals 48 square centimeters, because remember we have to add in that square when you are finding the area. All right, so write the multiplication equation to find the area of this rectangle. So go ahead and pause the video, write your multiplication equation and solve, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's what I came up with. So I know that we're gonna multiply the length and the width of this, so the two side lengths. So five times nine, equals 45 square centimeters. Did you guys get that too? Awesome. All right, so let's do one more. Okay, so here's our next rectangle. Write the multiplication equation to find the area, solve, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together.
All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Okay, so here's what I came up with. I know that I would multiply eight times nine and eight times nine equals 72 square inches for our unit of measure. All right, awesome job, friends. All right, so let's look. Oh, I have one more for us, sorry. One more, go ahead and pause the video, write your multiplication equation to find the area of this rectangle, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. I thought this one was kind of an easy one because I love to multiply by 10. So 10 times seven equals 70 square feet. Okay, so now we're gonna work on a new kind of problem. What do you notice about this rectangle? Yeah, we have one of the side lengths, right? And we have the area, but we don't know both side lengths. Hmm. So we're gonna write the multiplication equation to show how to find the area of this rectangle. You're gonna use a question mark for the unknown side length. So before, when we were doing them, we were multiplying the side times the other side equals the area. Well, so now we're gonna be multiplying one side and the unknown is that other side length. So that's gonna be a question mark. And then we already have the area. So go ahead and pause the video. Actually, let's do one together. So I would say three times question mark because that's my unknown, that's my unknown side length equals 27 square centimeters. Then I would have to solve for that unknown side which I know that three times nine equals 27. So I'm gonna take away my question mark from my unknown side and I'm gonna put in nine centimeters. Now we're gonna write the related division equation. So we know that multiplication and division are related, okay? They're part of a family. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna switch around our numbers to turn it into a division equation. So I know when I have division, I have to start with the largest um, the largest number. So we're gonna do 27 divided by three because that's what I do know, and my unknown is nine. So the related division equation is 27 divided by three equals nine. So notice how my multiplication equation, I'm having those same numbers, we're just turning into division to help us because we can use division to help us solve and find an unknown side length as well. So when you know the area and one side's length, how can you find the other side length? So kind of think about what we just did. How can you use those to help you find the other unknown side length? What do you guys think? So the first thing that comes to my mind is we can think of it as a multiplication equation with an unknown factor. So that's where we did three times question mark equals 27. Or you could divide the area by the known side length. That's when we wrote that related division equation. So we did 27 divided by three equals nine. So you can use multiplication or division to be able to help you solve these problems. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let's give it a try. So we're gonna write the multiplication equation to show how to find the area of this rectangle. You're gonna use the question mark for the unknown side length. So go ahead and pause the video, write your multiplication equation, solve for that unknown side length with that question mark. So you should have on your board question mark equals to be able to find and then fill in what question mark equals <laughs> to solve for the unknown side. So go ahead and pause the video, equation, solve, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here's what I came up with. Eight times question mark, my unknown, equals 24 square feet for the area. I know that question mark is going to equal three because eight times three equals 24. If you're not sure exactly how to do that, you can always skip counts by eights until you get to 24. So you can go eight, 16, 24. And I counted eight three times. All right, so now you're gonna write, oh, we wanna label that in instead of being unknown now. And you're gonna write your division, your related division equation. So go ahead and pause the video. Write a related division equation based on those numbers that we have. 
and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here's what I came up with. 24 divided by eight equals three because I used what I already knew of 24 and eight, divided those two numbers and came up with three. So there's two ways that you could solve for that unknown side length. You could use multiplication to find the unknown or you could solve using division. So whichever strategy you're most comfortable with, go ahead and use that one. All right, so let's look at another one. So here we have one side length is unknown and then we have seven inches across the top and the area is 42 square inches. So go ahead and pause the video, write your multiplication equation to find the area using a question mark for the unknown side length and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure you pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's what I came up with. So I did question mark times seven equals 42 square inches. And this time I did question mark first because in your problems, you're supposed to do the um, number of rows times how many are in each row. If you did seven times question mark, it's okay because we know that commutative property is allows us to flip flop those factors and still get the same product. Okay, so question mark, what does question mark represent friends in this problem? What times seven equals 42? Yeah, six. Okay, so I'm gonna erase my unknown side length and add in six. Now I want you guys to write a related division equation. So pause the video, write your related division equation and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Here's what I came up with. 42 divided by seven equals six. So again, you could solve it two ways. All right, so you guys rock. You guys did an awesome job finding the area using the side links and finding missing side links using the area and one side link. So rock on, you guys did a fantastic job. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know, I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye friends.